Welcome to another useful video with their edgy styling, unique choice of engines and options available, and compact size. Does the first generation Chevrolet Colorado, GMC Canyon, and Isuzu i-Series pickup trucks have what it takes to be your next vehicle? Watch this video and find out. Hey useful videos family, before we begin this buyer's guide, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also hit that alarm bell so you can check out all of the other amazing buyer's guides on my channel as well as get updated when I post a new video. Before the introduction of the Colorado and Canyon, GM offered the public the S10 and Sonoma compact pickup trucks. They were powered by either a 4-cylinder or a 4.3-liter Vortec V6. With their handsome styling and comfortable interior, they proved really popular with consumers. The Colorado as we know it was first seen as the Colorado Cruise. It was powered by a 6.2 liter V8 making 420 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. This concept truck was built by the GM Performance Division through the work of 200 volunteer employees using donated parts by GM Powertrain, GM Performance, and the GM Design Center. Developed on the then-new GMT-355 platform, Isuzu was heavily involved for a big chunk of 355 development. They were responsible for the packaging, interior design, and establishing quality and cost targets, technical specifications, and the complete structure of these pickup trucks. They were also the first to release a foreign version of this pickup truck called the D-Max in Thailand in May of 2002. Compared to the previous S10 model, this design is more angular with sharp creases and strong lines that lack the soft, rounded look that was quite prevalent on the S10. For the GMT-355 trucks, the grills are the main differentiating exterior feature. The Isuzu's grill features a crosshatch design, whereas the GMC has a professional grade styled grill like its bigger brothers, and the Chevrolet sports a single bar grille with a bow tie emblem in the middle. It was a strong design, with squared off wheel arches, strong character lines, nicely designed taillights and headlights, attractive alloy wheels, and an overall substantial and muscular stance. The wheelbase was 3 inches longer than the previous S10, and its height was 3 inches higher as well. There's a wide variety of configuration choices available, regular cab or extended cab, and a crew cab that offered four full-size front hinge doors. Regular and extended cab models were equipped with a 6-foot, 1-inch long bed, and the crew cab models offered the 5-foot, 1-inch long bed. GM gave these beds extra depth to give them an advantage over similar length but shallower beds that other competitors offered. All these configurations give the buyer a lot of versatility to be able to fine tune their purchase for exactly what they're looking for. If you're looking for a Colorado, think about the exact options that are important to you and the configuration that you would really like to have. Chances are, if you look in the used car market long enough, you'll find the vehicle that you're looking for because this was a pretty high production and high volume vehicle when it was being sold in the United States. If you're looking to purchase one of these trucks, there are some things that you should be mindful of when it comes to the exterior of the vehicle. First, you'll want to check the third brake light and make sure that it doesn't leak any water inside of the cabin. This is a very common problem and essentially affects all of these vehicles. Second, the door handles on the exterior of the vehicle for the doors tend to break off pretty easily so you may need to replace them. Third, the gas cap holder can sometimes not be affixed correctly. This also requires some custom drilling or a replacement of the part. Rust is a big issue. It's really important to check for rust all over the vehicle, especially on the outside of the vehicle and on the frame of the vehicle. Generally, it starts around the wheel wells, but can also infect a frame to make the vehicle essentially undrivable. Sometimes the exterior body panels look nice, but the frame is completely rusted and may make the vehicle unsafe to drive. After the headlights age, the lenses can become faded or hazy. You can get clear lenses again by purchasing a headlight restoring kit or by replacing the headlights completely. Finally, the tailgate handle may not function properly. This may be due to a spring in the handle that has been dislodged or the handle assembly being broken. The interior of the GMT-355 trucks are kind of a mixed bag. 
The design, even when new, looked around 15 years old. Simply put, the designers fell short on producing a modern-looking and modern-feeling cabin. The dashboard was very generic and plain-looking and lacked the high-quality feel of other offerings. The ergonomics, on the other hand, were pretty solid. All of the controls were laid out in a useful manner, with easy-to-use and understand rotary controls for the HVAC system, a radio with big buttons, and clear, easy-to-read gauges. Short of some trim and color options, the interior was virtually unchanged from 2004 until 2012 when the GMT-355 production stopped. With the availability of the regular cab, extended cab, and crew cab models, there was a lot of different variation in the seating options available. This gave buyers a lot of choice, which was a great thing. Additionally, in models like the crew cab, you have a 60-40 split folding rear seat, which enables you to carry long or bulky items without giving you a lot of issues. The rear seats on the extended cab models were no longer jump seats like those found in the S10, but regular forward-facing seats with a separate bottom and back cushion. During your pre-purchase inspection, when looking at the interior, make sure that you check the HVAC controls to ensure that the fan works on all levels 1, 2, 3, and 4. GM used a poorly designed connector and resistor system that generated lots of heat and poor contact between connectors, causing the wires to melt and burn away. GM does make a replacement connector system, which is part number PK1521824. The front passengers and driver's seats may have damage to them due to egress and ingress of the vehicle. If this is the case, you might need to get an upholstery shop to repair the seat for you, but it should be something to look out for. Additionally, the radio controls can flake or peel off after an extended amount of time, requiring a new or aftermarket radio to set straight. Also, the grab handles or the buckets to open and close the door can fall off, creating an unsightly gap in the door panel, as well as making it a little bit dangerous. On extended cab models, the rear quarter door handles can break off, which will require replacement and something that you should look out for. In 2002, GM developed the Atlas series of engines. They all shared a common architecture, which included an inline cylinder configuration, dual overhead cams, variable valve timing on the exhaust cam, aluminum block and heads, and a compression ratio of 10 to 1. They also included a coil-on plug ignition system, electronic throttle control, and exhaust manifolds that incorporated a pre-cat light-off converter. Final development concluded with a 4-cylinder, 5-cylinder, and 6-cylinder in the Atlas family of engines, with the Colorado, Canyon, and I-Series receiving the 4- and 5-cylinder engine. You might be wondering, why a 5-cylinder engine? Isn't that kind of an odd number of cylinders, or an odd engine configuration? Well, GM's thinking was that when you properly tuned a 5-cylinder engine, it would give you the power output of a 6-cylinder engine, but with the fuel efficiency of a 4-cylinder engine. 2004 to 2006 models had two engine options available, a 2.8-liter LK5 4-cylinder making 175 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque, and the 3.5-liter L52 5-cylinder engine that made 220 horsepower and 225 pound-feet of torque. In 2007, the engines were bored out to give more displacement and power. The 4-cylinder was now a 2.9-liter with 185 horsepower and 190 pound-feet of torque, and the 3.5-liter was bored out to 3.7-liters and now offered 242 horsepower and 242 pound-feet of torque. 2009 was a very exciting year because now you could get the 5.3 liter V8 engine with 300 horsepower and the 3.7 liter I5 engine was revised with 242 horsepower and 242 pound-feet of torque at 4600 RPM now instead of 2800 RPM. When equipped with rear-wheel drive and the 5.3 liter V8, a Colorado or Canyon could accelerate from 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds, which is pretty quick for a midsize or compact pickup truck. The manual transmission was the Eisen AR5, 
and the automatic transmission was the 4-speed 4L60. Note that the V8 engine was not available with a manual transmission. All 4x4 models were equipped with Isuzu's T150 transfer case, and this transfer case will be equipped whether you have a manual or automatic transmission. In terms of engine problems, the factory valve seats in the 2004 through 2006 3500 and 2800 series engines were not up to the normal hardness standards and a lot of them experience a premature wear problem. They can cause a loss of compression that may result in hard starting, hesitation, loss of power, or random misfire codes. A lot of the trouble codes that pop up are usually a P0171 or P0174 and sometimes a random misfire code which is the P0300. On the camshaft actuator valve, if the metal mesh is broken or the o-ring is shot, you could have an oil leak or drivability issues such as loss of power, sluggishness, hesitation, or an overall shaky idle. Replacing this part is not difficult to do, but it is a common part that you should look out for. Look for OBD codes P0014, P0011, and P0017. Many owners also report issues with the battery not being of an adequate size and the battery post not doing a good enough job grabbing the terminals from the battery. A quick swap to a larger size battery and better battery terminals can generally make a lot of the electrical problems go away. However, it's also a good idea to check all of the grounding points within the chassis of the vehicle and to ensure that the blower motor wiring is replaced and working correctly. One of the strongest suits of the 355 series trucks was the availability of a lot of different options. Buyers could really configure and realize their dream truck by looking at the different options available. Things like choosing between a regular cab, extended cab, or crew cab, to different models like the availability of the rear-wheel drive ZQ8 or the 4x4 centric Z71 package. The trucks had a 19 gallon fuel capacity and with the crew cab you could seat up to six individuals in a decent amount of comfort. The extended cab models could seat up to four people in a pinch. The colors of the interior and exterior on the 355 series trucks were also really nice. They had a lot of bright, vivid colors that you couldn't find on other makes and models, so it was a differentiating factor for this series of pickup trucks. After all of this information, what's my verdict on the 355 series pickup trucks? Well, I give them a 7 out of 10 burnouts. They look good, they have a lot of different variants and specifications available for either on-road performance or off-road ability, and they have that certain truck look and feel that I think a lot of compact pickup truck buyers like to see. My personal preference would be a 5.3 liter V8 crew cab with the rear wheel drive on street performance package. Thanks so much for watching guys. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Take care and we'll see you for the next video.